Hello friends, today we are going to study about quadrilaterals and see their classifications. So let us start with the definition. What is a quadrilateral? It is a closed figure on a plane which is bounded by four line segments. So if you see this figure over here, it has how many segments? Four line segments and it is a closed figure. Hence, this becomes a quadrilateral. On the other hand, if you look at these figures over here, this one has three sides, this figure has five sides and this has six sides. So these are definitely not quadrilaterals. So a quadrilateral you can also say is a polygon that is made up of four line segments. Now it is easy to remember that from the name because quadri means four and latus means side. So quadrilateral means four sides. Now coming to the properties of a quadrilateral, the most important property of a quadrilateral is that the sum of angles in a quadrilateral is always 360 degrees. So in this figure if you see angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D will always be 360 degrees. So friends, the first type of quadrilateral we are going to study is the trapezium. Now trapezium is that quadrilateral in which only one pair of opposite sides are parallel while the other pair is not parallel. So if you look at this, this is a quadrilateral and if you see these two opposite sides, they are parallel to each other whereas these two sides are not. So this becomes a trapezium. Only one pair of opposite sides are going to be parallel. Now these parallel sides are known as the basis. So in this figure, PQ and SR are going to be the basis of the trapezium. Whereas the non-parallel sides which are PS and QR, they are known as the legs of the trapezium. So PQ is parallel to SR. So as every trapezium is a quadrilateral, the sum of all angles in a trapezium will always be 360 degrees. This property is inherited from the quadrilateral. Now friends, moving on to the next property, the sum of the angle pairs between the parallel lines is 180 degrees. So what do we mean by this is, if you see these two are the parallel lines. Now what are the angle pairs between these two parallel lines? It is angle Q and angle R here and angle P and angle S here. So these two angle pairs when added will always give you 180 degrees which means angle Q plus angle R is 180 degrees and angle P plus angle S is also 180 degrees. So the sum of angle pairs between the parallel lines is always 180 degrees. There is no other property, there is no other condition on a trapezium. So sides, diagonals, angles need not be equal at all. Now friends, a special type of trapezium is known as the isosceles trapezium. It is that trapezium in which the two non-parallel sides or the legs are going to be equal. So if you see in this figure, already it is a trapezium because these two sides are parallel. In addition to that, these two sides which are not parallel, they are equal to each other. So they end up being a isosceles trapezium. So PQ is parallel to SR and PS is equal to QR. So you can remember what is an isosceles trapezium by remembering what is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangle means it has two sides equal. Isosceles trapezium also has two sides equal. Now coming to the properties of an isosceles trapezium, you know that every trapezium is a quadrilateral. So the sum of all angles is going to be 360 degrees. Also the sum of angle pairs between the parallel lines is going to be 180 degrees because it's a trapezium. Now in addition to this, the angle pairs which are adjacent to the parallel lines are also equal. So that means if you look at this parallel line PQ, the angles adjacent to that line are P and Q. So these two angles become equal that is angle P is equal to angle 
Q. Similarly, if you look at this line SR, what are the angles adjacent to SR? Angle S and angle R. These two angles are also equal. So angle S is equal to angle R. Now the next property of an isosceles trapezium is that the diagonals are congruent. That is the diagonals are equal. That is PR is equal to SQ. The diagonals are equal and the diagonals if they intersect at the point O then OQ is equal to OP and OS is equal to OR. So moving on the next property is that the opposite angles are going to be supplementary. That is angle P plus angle R is 180 degrees and angle S plus angle Q these two angle s plus angle q is also going to be 180 degrees so these are the properties of an isosceles trapezium now friends after trapezium the next type of quadrilateral is a kite now what is a kite a kite is that quadrilateral which has two pairs of adjacent equal length sides. So if you see this figure, it's a quadrilateral and these two sides are equal in length and these two sides are also equal in length. So this is called a kite and it is very very similar in shape to the real life kite that we play with. Now since every kite is a quadrilateral, the sum of all angles is going to be 360 degrees. So the next property of a kite is that the two angles where the unequal sides meet are equal. So what it means is, see these two sides are unequal and they meet over here. Similarly, these two sides are unequal and they meet over here. So these two angles which are formed, angle B and angle D, end up being equal. So angle B is equal to angle D. Now the next property of the kite is that the two diagonals intersect at right angles. That is the diagonal BD and AC are perpendicular to each other. BD is perpendicular to AC. Now the next property of the kite is that the longer diagonal bisects the shorter diagonal which means which is the longer diagonal AC bisects BD into two equal parts that which means OB is equal to OD. Now you can also visualize the shorter diagonal BD dividing the kite into two isosceles triangles. So BD here has divided the kite into two triangles. See B a D which is isosceles and the other triangle B C D which is also isosceles. So it is actually made up of two isosceles triangles. Now friends the next type of quadrilateral we are going to see is a parallelogram. So what is a parallelogram? It is that quadrilateral in which the opposite sides are parallel to each other. That is AB is parallel to DC and AD is parallel to BC. So such a quadrilateral is called a parallelogram. Now in this case also since it's a quadrilateral the sum of all the angles is going to be 360 degrees. Now because the opposite sides are parallel to each other the opposite sides also end up being equal to each other which means AB is equal to DC and BC is equal to AD. That is one property. So the next property is that the diagonals actually bisect each other which means OA is equal to OC and OB is equal to OD. Now friends another interesting property of a parallelogram is that the consecutive angles are supplementary. So what do we mean by that? Angle A plus angle B are consecutive here. Just note angle B and C are consecutive, C and D are consecutive, D and A are consecutive. So their sums are also going to be equal to 180 degrees. Another important property is that the opposite angles are equal which means angle A is equal to angle C and angle B is equal to angle D. So these are the main properties of a parallelogram.
Now the first type of parallelogram is a rectangle. It's a very common figure that we have learnt. So what is a rectangle? A rectangle is that parallelogram in which each angle is equal to 90 degrees. So all the four angles when they become 90 degrees then that parallelogram is a rectangle. Now what are the properties? The diagonals are going to be equal which means AC is equal to DB. Another property of the rectangle is that the diagonals also bisect each other which we know is the property of every parallelogram, right? So it inherits all the properties of the parallelogram. Apart from this, all the angles when added will give you 360 degrees and since it's a parallelogram, the opposite sides are also going to be equal. So these are the properties of a rectangle. The second type of a parallelogram we are going to see friends is a rhombus. So what is a rhombus? A rhombus is that parallelogram where all the sides are equal to one another. That means AB is equal to BC is equal to CD equal to DA. They are all equal. Of course, since it's a parallelogram, the opposite sides are also going to be parallel to one another. Now, the diagonals are going to bisect each other because it's a parallelogram, but because it's a rhombus, they will actually be perpendicular also. So, AC is going to be perpendicular to BD. Did you notice that? Now, that is a special property of a rhombus. So friends, the next property of a rhombus is that each diagonal bisects the angles at the vertices. So if you see this diagonal AC, it is going to bisect this angle A and this angle C. Similarly, the diagonal DB is going to bisect which two angles? Angle D and angle B. So this is another property of a rhombus. So apart from this, a rhombus inherits all properties of a parallelogram such as the sum of angles is going to be 360 degrees, the opposite sides are going to be parallel and so on. Friends, the next type of parallelogram is a square. So what is a square? A square is that parallelogram which has four equal sides and four right angles. So if you see, it's actually a combination of a rhombus and a rectangle because a rhombus has all sides equal and a rectangle has all angles as 90 degrees. So it's actually a combination of these two figures. So if you see here, an important property is that the diagonals are equal to each other. So this is a new property of a square which is not there in a rhombus or a rectangle or a parallelogram. Apart from this, another property is that the diagonals are bisecting each other at 90 degrees. So this is the same property as that of a rhombus. Now all the other properties of a rhombus and a rectangle are also shared by a square. If we summarize whatever we studied right now, it is in the form of this particular concept map that you have a quadrilateral and there are three types of quadrilaterals which we study the trapezium the kite and the parallelogram there is a special type of trapezium called the isosceles trapezium a parallelogram on the other hand has a rhombus and a rectangle and these two when combined give you a square so this friends is a summary of quadrilateral and the different types of quadrilaterals.